Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and we're going to do a propagation video today. What I'm actually asking is what happens after the cut? What happens to the mother plant? What happens to the cutting biologically? And we'll take a close look at the branching and healing on the mother plant. We'll also look at the callusing and early rooting on the cutting in a way that I hope will make it useful for you as a gardener or as a plant propagator. So from the mother plant's point of view, the very first thing that happens after the snip is it wants to protect itself. That injury, that wound, if, whether it was a break or whether it was a cut, it needs to seal that off and it sends up some substances to do that. Uh, it may be more obvious when you look at something like a euphorbia with a white milky sap that comes out. On shrubs in the landscape and trees, you may not see it quite so obviously. Some of them sap more than others, but the plant is doing the same thing. It sends up substances to seal off the vascular tissues and stop from moisture loss and stop and reroute all of the hormones and nutrients that are moving up and down the plant. So the natural human impulse might be to put a band-aid on it to try to heal it up or protect it from, from injury. And you'll see that with rose people, they will sometimes do uh, nail polish or glue to try to seal that end. Or on larger trees, the impulse has been for years to put on a uh, some tar or you know to try to paint it over and protect that wound uh, apparently from insects and injuries and moisture loss the fact is plants are well practiced at healing themselves after cuts or breaks and your intervention is more likely to do harm than good in many cases uh, there may be exceptions to that rule but in general leave it alone let it heal on its own well that first plant reaction the, uh, the sap running and the healing may be able to be observed in a few minutes. The next reaction on the plant may take a little bit longer to show up. That's because it's hormonal. So you see this growing tip here going straight up. That's because of auxins in the plant. And when you snip it, what happens is the auxins uh, get redirected or the balance of it gets redirected to cytokinins, which encourage branching. So that's why you'll see this as such a useful step on young plants or young seedlings that are growing straight upwards. You tip them and you'll end up getting more branching. And uh, let me show you an example of that on some of the plants I have inside under propagation right now. Well, here's a good example of that branching reaction. This is a plant of salvia hot lips that I picked up at the bargain bin at the end of the season. And so I took cuttings and obviously it's nice to have the cuttings. It's great and they've rooted out in a 32 cell plug now. But look at the mother plant here. Look how much branching there is on there. So I could take another batch of cuttings off of this twice as large because of all of the branching that has resulted. Here's a great example and a fun example of both the healing and the branching. This is a Japanese Aralia or a Fatsia called Camouflage that I found at a local garden center. Don't see it up here too much. So I thought I'd grab one and try my hand at giving it some cuttings. It's not patented as far as I can tell, but have a look at how this healed at the top here. I'll get you a close up of that as I can. Nice and dry and healing up beautifully, but you see this section here was not here at all. This was just a leaf like this one here. And you can see that already it's pushed a bunch of new growth. Now this is about three to four weeks after the time of cutting. So that's how long it took for this to start pushing that new growth. And it, it was a hormone reaction. It basically had to get rid of the apical dominance of the stem that was there uh, and then start pushing side shoots. But you can see it didn't just push this one. Uh, every bud on here is starting to experience some push. So right down here at the base of the plant, I hope you can see that we have new leaves down there I have a nice bud appearing on the side here so I'm gonna get massive branching off of this which will give me much more chances later on for propagation so now let's talk about the cutting side because obviously when you take a cutting of a plant it's gonna to have to do those same processes It's gonna to have to heal those cut ends it's also going to have to change its hormonal balance and we'll talk about those in a minute but the first and most immediate need is that it has been separated from all of its source of energy it no longer has a, a supply of water from the roots or nutrients it no longer has attachment to the plant to move its sugars down or move nutrients up so it's on its own whatever stage you cut it at at that time whatever health it was in whatever stage stored nutrients it had and energy it had, that's what it has pretty much until it roots. So you're gonna focus on the conditions, the conditions being temperature, humidity, and light. Temperatures in uh, Celsius typically uh, low 20s or in, in Fahrenheit would be low to mid 70s. Uh, humidity, high, somewhere in the 70 degree range, you're gonna achieve that either with mist or with a humidity dome. And light, yes, it needs some light, if not the least of which is to send some more of those hormonal signals to get it to root. 
So here's a look at that indoor setup I sometimes recommend for hobbyists doing rooting. This is a humidity dome, and basically it's just a clear Tupperware container with some holes drilled in the top. I'll talk about the reason for that in a minute. And you can see some condensation on the inside here. For more information on what I do with the conditions particularly, I made a video not too long ago on how to feed your cuttings during the rooting period, and that goes through them in more detail. But I wanted to move right on to the next thing, which is the hormone balance. So there's two hormones basically involved in the rooting process uh, in, in a general term. So uh, one of them is auxins, and the auxins I usually put on with a rooting hormone like this. Now, you may recognize that when I talked about auxins in the last section, it was talking about that apical dominance, that straight upwards growth. But when you remove that, some of those auxins tend to move also downward, and they're also associated with rooting. So it's the up and down hormone, and by applying a, a rooting hormone at the right percentage, and it does vary from uh, from growth stage and also by variety, uh, then you can actually encourage that rooting a little bit quicker. And because you're in a race against time with this cutting running out of moisture, running out of nutrients, running out of energy, uh, it is better to encourage it as fast as possible. I did want to talk quickly about a second hormone, which is called ethylene. And ethylene is a gas, and sometimes it will build up around these cuttings. It also encourages them to root, but the second thing it also can do is it can encourage premature leaf drop. And so if you don't have venting on your dome or if it holds too much of that ethylene in, sometimes you'll see fast premature leaf drop on your cuttings, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But if you can uh, provide some of that um, air circulation, it not only vents some of that ethylene, but it also stops it from becoming so wet or so moist in there that you end up rotting the cuttings. If you've done the job right within a few weeks, you should start to see initial rooting. But before that even happens, one thing that you'll often see on your cuttings is something called callusing. So let's take a quick look at callusing on a couple of different varieties here. And first one I'm going to show you is actually from that uh, Japanese aralia or the fatsia that I took cuttings of. And you can see this a big, big chunky stem, big cutting on that one there. And of course it is quite slow. I found that from Aralia relatives in the past. Uh, but the first thing I'm seeing here on the bottom of the cutting, and mind you, this is still weeks out. So it's taken this long to develop a little bit of callus, a ring of callus around the base of the cutting here. And because this is so large, you can see that in kind of a pronounced way that uh, on woody plants, particularly, it starts around the vascular tissue around the outside ring there, and then proceeds onwards. I'll give you some close-ups now of some roses as well. And you're gonna see that even though it's not as perfect uh, an example as this, that the roses also start from the outside and then uh, continue on to differentiate that callusing into rooting. Before we move on entirely from the growing conditions or environment of those cuttings, let's talk a little more about light. And let me say this, you don't need the full intense sunlight that you would have outdoors. Typically cuttings are moved to a slightly more shaded location so they don't dry out the cuttings. I'm not going to say that the point of the light now is not photosynthesis because the cutting does continue to photosynthesize, but really the more the point is to have a low intensity where it can uh, send that sugar and the auxins down the stem to signal the rooting rather than full-blown get lots of energy in there the cutting just can't handle it at this point so inside there I have my grow lights on a schedule and uh, I'm giving them something like 10 hours a day uh, and they're quite a bit a ways above the plants and turn down in intensity so it's not like you would uh, provide if you were trying to give a good start to seedlings for instance where you really want intense sunlight to keep them compact uh, this is a lower intensity than that all right, that's all I have for you today on what happens after the cutting. Takeaways from this, of course, on the mother plant. Uh, don't bother sealing those pruning cuts and manage the branching because that's awesome. That's a great side effect of taking cuttings is that you get great branching on the mother plant. The second thing is to do with the cutting is that I hope that knowing what is actually going on with it biologically can help to improve your chances, especially on managing the conditions of those cuttings as they're trying to recover and root. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.